Now, as homework, um, SIPSA just throws this at you. So, uh, from from these you know, this deduction, uh, he says then the length of the two substrings x y you know, contiguous x y the length of that sub, well two substrings joined like concatenated uh, the length of them must be less or equal to p. So I ask you to prove that for homework. He 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 doesn't prove it. He just throws it at you. Right? So there's a, an intellectual challenge. Work, work it out. All right. Uh, so, so what? Well, this is condition three of uh, the pumping lemma. Okay, so, uh, so th there it is derived. Well, actually, it wasn't. Sipsa <laughs> uh, just throws it at you. Uh, now, it's up to you. Is, is that obvious? Uh, does it require quite a bit of thinking? Uh, well, uh, HW, homework. Uh, yeah. See if you can. Uh, deduce this from from you know, the earlier reasoning. All right, now the formal proof. So that, so, uh, so we've now found um, the three conditions. We've found that this reasoning uh, where you assume that um, the pumping length is equal to the number of states in your machine. And from that, we, you know, we found these three conditions. Uh, with a few question marks along the way, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this. This is happening quite a few times now with Sipsa. I'm not uh, not entirely happy about this. Anyway, All right now the formal proof. So uh, let your machine be uh, you know, labeled capital M. Here's your formal definition. You know, the usual five tuple for for your machine starting state Q1, and let this machine. Uh, recognize the language A. Right? So we're, you know, we're now in the formal proof of the pumping lemma. So we have to uh, we have to show that uh, there is a, a p, a little p, called the pumping length, such that all strings in the language that whose length is greater or equal to little p, that uh, all of them all those strings can be pumped, uh, meaning that uh, the after the pumping, the resulting x y to the i z that uh, that pumped string satisfies the three conditions. One, that pump string belongs to the language. Uh, the size of y is positive, and the length of x, y is less or equal to the little p, the, the pumping length, right? these three conditions. All right, uh, okay, so uh, let, let s be your input string that goes into the machine. Let's assume it has uh, little n uh, symbols. Yeah, the, the, the length of that input string is little n, let's say. So each, each of these s, s's here, they represent uh, the up symbol of your alphabet, okay, your, your big sigma, right? and and your the input length of the string is little n, okay. Yeah, it says here, and it's you know, this s is a member of your language a. It's one of the strings that this machine a accepts, right? Uh, now this here is uh, the secret. Now before we're calling it q, I don't know why you changed, but. Uh, <laughs> This is what he put in the textbook. Um, so these 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 R's now, little R's, they are the that's the sequence of the states that the machine goes through as it reads each one of these uh, input symbols. Right? So it starts off. Uh, I don't know why here because he says the starting state here is Q1. Sips is not good on details. Right. Anyway, so this is the sequence of states the machine goes through. So your R1 will start off at Q1, because that's the starting state. Right? And then it'll read the first symbol, and it, uh, from the transition function here, that will tell you what, the, you know, consulting the transition table, it will tell you what the next state should be. Well, it'll be R2, whatever it is, and so on. And until this is your last state that the machine is in. And it, this symbol here, will uh, help determine what this final state is. 
Now, whatever, um, now given this machine is a DFA and it, recognize, it recognizes mach, um, language A, therefore this symbol S here, uh, it, you know, this, uh, this last input symbol will help generate this last, uh, the final state. And this final state here has to be one of the accept states, right? Because, because this string uh, must be accepted. And it must be accepted because S is a member of A, the language A, right? Okay. Uh, so each successive state, let, let's say the ith, the ith plus one, uh, that state will be, you know, uh, will be determined you know, using the transition function delta from the previous, state, well, the current state, if you like. This is like next state. This is current state, uh, and the input symbol that you're that you're reading. Okay, so. Um, so there's your uh, transition function delta from from here, you know, from for, for this machine. Okay, uh, now this sequence here. Why is it n plus one? Why why are there n plus one states? Well, because of the assumption. Let's see here. Um, well, bec because there are n symbols in your input string. Okay, the little n. So you start off in the starting state here, you read n symbols. So each, each time you read a symbol, you go to another state. So uh, this is the second state, having read the first input symbol. So this will be the nth plus one state, having read the nth input symbol. Okay? So, so you'll have n plus one states. All right. Uh, So uh, the number of states has length n plus one. Okay, here you see that because starting at one. All right. Uh, now uh, n is greater or equal to p. Uh, why is that? Where does that come from? Uh, where where does that come from? Now, what are the, one of the conditions of uh, your pumping lemma is um, that all strings in the language whose length is greater or equal to the pumping length, little p, they can all be pumped. That's that's one of the conditions of the pumping lemma. But where, hang on, just where does where does this come from? So this is assuming here that n is greater or equal to p. Oh, here. Uh, so it's given. Hold on. Length n. Oh, that's given, right? It's given. So you're choosing you're choosing an n that uh, so that the length of this input string is greater or equal to p. So that's a given, right? It's just part of your part of your model. Okay. So if n is greater or equal to p, obviously n plus one will be greater or equal to p plus 1, right? just adding 1 to both sides. Okay, so this comes from here, and this is just part of the model, uh, you know, one of the assumptions in your, in your proof. Okay? And you're just choosing an input string here such that the, the length of the input string, uh, n, is greater or equal to p, where p is the number of states in your, in your model. Okay, fair enough. Now, uh, now the length of the sequence of these states, that's n plus 1. Uh, now that will be larger than, uh, larger, or you know, greater or equal to p plus 1. Right? So that means amongst the first uh, p plus 1 uh, members of your sequence, this sequence here, two of them must be in the same state. Okay. And why is that? Well, because we chose p to be the number of uh, states, you know, number of different states that the machine has. Okay? So uh, now n plus 1 is greater or equal to p plus 1. p is the number of states, different states that, that the machine has. 
and the length of this sequence is n plus 1, but n plus 1 is greater or equal to p plus 1. So therefore there must be uh, at least one, um, well, there, there must be at least two of these uh, states that are the same. There must be a repeat, at least one repeat, has to be, okay? Right. Uh, yeah, using using the pigeonhole principle. Okay, now call call the first uh, the first time you get a repeat. Call that state R J, and the second time, you know, the second repeat, call that R L. Okay. Um, now because remember the, uh, because symbol. Now because R L, it, it's like the second occurrence of the repeat state, the state that's repeated. And because because uh, R L this, this state occurs occurs, and if you can see this um, amongst the first p, p, p plus one places in the sequence of states, right, where you started R one, then then L I don't know if you can see the second line, but L must be uh, less or equal to p plus one. Uh, does that make sense? Because uh, what is L? That's the position of the occurrence of the second repeat, you know, the repeat state, okay? And uh, now what's p plus 1? Well, that's uh, that's less than or equal to n plus 1. And what's n plus 1? That's the length of the sequence of states, okay? So uh, just, you know, the second occurrence must be occurring either at the end of this or before. So L must be, as a number, must be less or equal to P plus 1. Alright, I'll uh, continue straight on with the next uh, sessions. already been rather long. <laughs>